Hi, everybody, and welcome to episode 115 of the IROC Knits podcast. My name is Corey Eichelberger, and welcome. Welcome to you if you're brand new, and welcome if you have been around since the very beginning, which is a long, long <laughs> journey that we've been on. It is Sunday afternoon, and I am recording because I have book club tomorrow, and we want to watch the game tonight, and I've got some other things going on, so just thought I'd record early here on Sunday morning. We were at the original Pancake House this morning um, with my brother and sister-in-law, and my husband made a trip to Shields to buy something for the boat. So we've already had good gluten-free pancakes <laughs> for breakfast, and it was a nice start to the day. It's sunny here today, so I'm also hoping to get a walk in this afternoon. I have so much to talk to you guys about. So many things happened and didn't happen in the last two weeks, so we've got a lot of catching up to do. But let's start with what I'm wearing today. This is the Garlands Around Me uh, shawl by Lisa Hannes, or Hannes, H-A-N-N-E-S. Um, this is from my friend Stacy, Stacy Knits. Um, she was getting rid of a few shawls that she had sample knit for people, and I took this one because I didn't have a lot of red. And um, I might not wear it the whole time because um, it's going to get warm in here, and so I'll show it to you. So look at how lovely that is. Slip stitches, uh, mosaic knitting, um, stripes. Um, I'm sure this was using a five mini, uh, mini skein set, and I'm dressed all for Valentine's today. Uh, we went out with Kylie and Stevie and Macy and Sahil last night um, for dinner, and I wore this shirt and I have red jeans and I had my hot pink glitter tennis shoes on and uh and this scarf and Kylie said mm, well that's a choice and I said it is my lot in life or my goal in life to mortify my child with my bold color choices and color palette as we go about our days she is not a bright not everyone is and uh and so then you know I wore it for two hours last night and I got up this morning and I thought I'm putting that on for church <laughs> and then we went to breakfast and and now I'm home and uh yeah so I have this is a, a shirt from Talbot's that I got at Christmas time it has this little trim on it and so it's definitely Christmassy with my red jeans but I thought it was also Valentine's-y so happy Valentine's Day to all you gals do we have an equivalent for the guys Matt I don't know I guess that would just be the Valentine right <laughs> Um, not a big Valentiner. Uh, I like to go out. I like to use it as an excuse to be taken out to dinner by my husband or for him to buy me a little gift, which we'll be talking about. <laughs> but um, yeah. Oh, and I like candy. So Valentine's for me is my opportunity to gift. Amber got a gift from me yesterday. She thanked already. Um, my mom got a gift from me yesterday. Uh, I've never that blue cowl. Remember that blue and white Angora, French Angora cowl. So she got that in the mail. That was a hug for her. And then I gave the kids candy last night. Um, we had not seen them uh, since Christmas. So we missed Kylie's birthday and then Valentine's Day. And we missed Macy at Christmas. And that's Kylie's college roommate who lived with us for two summers. So if you've been around for a while, you would know that, that she worked in the city and lived with us for two summers. Um, so we're pretty close to her because Kylie didn't live with us during those summers. And, um, and she's still in the Twin Cities, Minneapolis area um, and has a new boyfriend. And so we got to meet him for the first time. And so I gave Macy a hat that I had knit, one of those chunky Chelsea um, 
chunky yarn, uh, Chelsea Lux yarns with the big pom-pom on. I gave her that um, for Christmas, birthday, whatever. Um, and she liked it. Um, and then I gave her a, uh, told her that you can take the pom-pom off with button can come off. And then there's a chibi needle, a plastic chibi needle so that if she wants to pop that back through. I don't think most young women probably run around with tapestry needles anywhere. So, um, and Sahil was impressed with the, the hat. So he probably might need a hat someday. And then I gave Kylie the dark and stormy sweater. Um, I have finished objects so we could do that next. Um, I finished both pairs, uh, extra pairs of black socks for Kylie. So I had um, had tubes cranked. I told you all that by Knit Spin Farm, who will crank tubes for you at the gauge that you want, and they'll crank as much as, of the tube as you want. And then I got one pair done and gave them to Kylie before we left for our trip to Arizona. Um, but I didn't see her. We had her car and then Ross dropped it off. So her little bag was in the front seat of the car. And, uh, and then I didn't finish the second two pair and I'll be explaining that, but um, I put a little color at the top of each one to kind of keep them as, in pairs because I matched the number of rows and stuff. They all kind of match, so I think they're mixed and matchable, but she ended up with three pairs of black fingering weight socks, which were not fun to knit. I mean, you really have to love someone to knit them black socks, right? <laughs> um, but the tubes were cranked, so I did the heels, toes, and cuffs, and it worked out fine. So she was excited about that. And then I also gave her her mittens that I knit last year, which I think I shared on the podcast. They're very naughty. Um, I won't say it in case you have little children in the room, but they say cold as fire truck on the, on the front. And they were done for Christmas and I didn't gift them to her. I have a gift box. They should have been in the gift box and they weren't. They were in this little bench that I have by my window here. It's a little leather, red leather bench. It has two pillows on it. I keep a ton of knitting in there. I was in there, I don't even know what for. And there what? There the mittens were. So she got those and she was very excited about those because I had knit her a pair in the past and we threw them away when she moved. Do you remember that story? We She had good stuff to go to Goodwill in bags and then she had garbage, black plastic garbage bags that needed to go to the garbage. And then um, she had put all of her coats, um, winter coats and jean jackets and stuff in this big black plastic bag. And it went out with the stuff instead of going to her new place. So all of her coats were gone, her jackets, everything she had, her hats, her stuff I'd knit for her, her mittens. So I had re-knit those. So she got she got those, although they were supposed to be for Christmas. Um, and then I gave them some candy in the box. And then yesterday I made chewy granola bars because I that's the treat I used to send the girls at college, like if they'd come home for the weekend or I would just ship them down there. And, um, <laughs> and so I packaged up so Ross and I had a couple, then I packaged up some for Kylie and Stevie, and then I packaged up some for Macy, and then I said, you're going to have to explain to Sue why you guys are so excited about <clears throat> getting these. And they're like, oh, they knew right away when they pulled out the little baggies. <laughs> so I'd wrapped them in plastic wrap and then stuck them in baggies so that they would stay a little fresher. And they were like, oh, chili girl bars right away. So that was kind of funny. So they were explaining to him why uh, Kylie and Stevie were arguing over who got which candy and whatever. Not arguing, but Stevie's like, is this all for me? It was really cute. And so, um, yeah, we had a lovely evening. We had a very nice dinner out. We sat for several hours and visited. We had not seen them in a while. So that was lovely. And that is my finished objects for the week because those took a little time and I'll, I'll be telling you about that. You would have just seen at the beginning the five featured patterns for this week. So at the beginning of every podcast, I'm featuring five of my patterns. Some of you are brand new to me and you don't know, you're not aware of some of the things that I've designed. So I'm putting those at the beginning. So today you would have seen the Atta Girl sweater, the Baby Kiki, which is a tiny little baby blanket, like a carry-along blanket. So if you need a quick gift um, for a baby shower don't have time to knit the full blanket these are kind of more miniature sized um, the bada bing pontini which was very popular when i wear, wore the blue and red one on the podcast if you'll remember um, everybody was like oh my gosh what yarn is that and what what pattern is that i should wear that again i think i 
I should put that on this week. Um, and then the Bartlett Pear Socks in DK and Fingering. So you would have seen all those featured at the beginning. Um, I am still having a sock sale because the sock knit along is still going on. So we will be gifting um, prizes for Ravelry and Instagram um, a little bit later on, as well as the um, podcast drawing giveaway. So I, I kind of do that closer to the end. You can always scroll forward on the bottom in the sections and get to the section that you want or skip ahead if there's a section that you don't want to listen to. Um, I will say I kind of dropped the recipe section um, because the podcasts were just getting so long and I'm such a chatterbox. Um, but Ross and I made upside down pizza pot pies the other night from a guy on Instagram and we made our own pizza dough with yogurt, Greek yogurt, and a little bit of baking soda. And then you layered in the bottom of a, of a ramekin, you layered, um, we sprayed them and then we put the cheese and then the sauce and then the, top, no, the, then the toppings. So Ross had sausage and pepperoni and I had mushroom and peppers and onions that I had sauteed and then sauce, and then on the top of the ramekin, you just put a little piece of this dough over the top. And it would be perfect if you had like those Grand's biscuits to lay over the top, but I'm doing gluten-free. So I made mine with gluten-free flour and Ross made his with regular flour and we worked kind of together and we've never made it before. And I needed to use more yogurt to have my dough come together, but it was a high protein situation um, for the dough and they were really good. like really good. I would definitely do it again. So I'll post the link in the um, show notes just to tell you about those because it was kind of fun. I said to Ross, next time, because we are making two different doughs, next time it might be better to just make a bigger dough and slap it on top of a, because layering it and putting the little thing over the top did take a little extra time. But they were really cute. <laughs> so might have taken might have been more time than it was. But then when you tipped it out, it kind of spread all over. It was really, it was really delicious. And the gluten-free one, the dough really wasn't bad at all. And it's hard to find good gluten-free products that are not dry, dense, or unflavorful. This, this wasn't bad. Of course, it had cheese and sauce on it. <laughs> but anyway, so I'll share that with you too. We're off to a story already. Um, let's do the sweater of the week this week. This is the Duchess vest. And I wore this when we went to Arizona. And I thought, I don't think I've ever shared this on the podcast. It's an older pattern. I may have showed it before, but what I really like is how I styled it with my orange and purple polka dot uh, dress. So it is came out of a classic elite pattern and pattern book. And so I'm not sure that I got it for free. I think it was actually in a little booklet, um, but it's by Kim Barnett, Barnett. And I put buttons all the way down the front along the neckline and I just put purple buttons on it because I think, for me, I felt like it needed some jizzing up and then I think it just really made the dress, <laughs> which was actually um, just laundered and it's a little wrinkly. Um, yeah, I think it made it really cute because those little buttons kind of coordinate with the little polka dots. And I think vests are really coming in. They're, um, they're really taking off. And this has this nice little cable detail where you cross your cable at the top and the bottom. So it was an easy, very easy knit, but had some nice details on it. Didn't take a ton of yarn. I think it was like a heavy worsted. Um, yarn if I remember right I can I'll put what yarn I used down below but yeah so I wore that and I will wear that all spring I think because you know sometimes our springs can go well into May for cool weather and then sometimes they're super warm but yeah so that's kind of fun I'm not doing a shawl because we kind of had a shawl this week but I have a different surprise for you coming up so well let's yeah no we'll wait because let's let's be organized here Corey <laughs> Stay on task, stay on task. Um, last time I talked about the ribbed capelet, if you'll remember, and I said that the pattern was not available and a couple people got in touch 
and I went out and looked, and it is available, but by Stephen B. So it was originally written by someone, and I think it was written for Stephen B. or for use at his shop. And then, so that when I went and looked at it and looked for the one I had knit, it, it was there, but un, the pattern was unavailable. But Stevens is very much available. And I did a post on Instagram this week. If you are looking to knit the Saturday Shrug that is been taking the world by storm um, by Caddy Jack's Knits or Jackie Rose, um, who went out to... Um, Bainbridge Island and we're out there at the yarn shop and they're selling the kits for these striped shrugs that are basically a ribbed tube. You cast on and you knit down. So the pattern is free. But Jackie is very petite and so she doesn't have very wide shoulders or very a very big bust line. And so the way she styles it is by pulling it down over her shoulders and she gets this little swoop in the neckline and what I've been seeing is that it does not fit everyone that well, right? The ribbed capelet starts smaller and gets bigger and will give you the exact same look in that heavyweight yarn, but it will go out over your shoulder. So if you're looking for the shoulder cover and not just the big chunky cowl look, you might wanna take a look at the ribbed capelet as an option, which I talked about a lot last week. And then, this is the yarn I would recommend. So I just bought a bunch of this yarn from Knit Picks. It's called Wonder Fluff, and it is a perfect weight for that Saturday shrug. I looked at big, I looked at the Lamb and Wool Big Birdie yarn, and to get enough skeins for my size, that cowl is gonna cost me almost $200. And to me, the, the amount of times I would wear it, that would just not be a, enough of a value. So I started roaming around the internet trying to find some, and there's lots of this, like there's Drops Air and um, other different fibers that are similar to this. But for the price point, this is a bulky weight and it is 142 yards in 50 grams because it weighs nothing. Um, I think that this is the best, the best bargain that I could find to knit the Saturday Shrug, which I'm going to actually knit the rib capelet to get a similar look. It's 70% um, baby alpaca, 23% nylon, and 7% merino. Whereas the, the Lamb and Kid, I said, God, the Lamb and Kid is, you know, they're doing lots of cashmere and high-end yarns, and they should be paid for their time and their work. But if you can't afford that price point and you really like the look of that Saturday Shrug, that would be my recommendation is to, to do the ribbed capelet. It's, a, it's very similar, it just has some increases in it. You can stripe it. It'll have your information for you by Stephen B. And then you can do it in a less expensive yarn, which I think is always a nice option to know about, right? Okay. What you knit, Corey? <laughs> All the things, but none of the things. Um, I think I'm going to do Corey's stories right here, and it will help to explain a lot of things, and then we'll go back and go into what I've been knitting, but um, it will just be easier to do Corey's stories right here. So when we signed off last time, uh, Monday, I put up the podcast, and... Um, on Tuesday, I got a tickle in my throat and my husband had a runny nose and I thought, uh oh, here we go. And yes, Ross and I both got COVID. Um, and in hindsight, we believe we got it on the airplane coming home from Arizona. You know, in Arizona, we spent a lot of time outside. We were outside of the car show. We walked outside. We dined with doors open. It was cool. So they would, we didn't sit outside under the heaters, but people were, uh, we just spent a lot of time outside. So we, we weren't, I mean, we were in airports, right? So you gotta be careful, but the gentleman sitting next to us in our row on the way home later, Ross said to me, and I didn't see this, I don't know how, but he had on two masks and he had his hood pulled up and pulled tight around his head. And Ross said, he was sick. And at one point he took his masks off to eat something and drink something. And Ross said, we sat next to him for four hours. I'm pretty sure he was sick. And Ross had never had COVID, but I had it last year in January for about 10 days. 
And I did not test positive until Saturday and Ross tested positive on Thursday. And Ross was pretty sick by Wednesday. He just felt really crappy. His nose was just like a faucet. And Ross never gets sick. He doesn't get anything. He and his mom never got anything. Someone could sneeze six blocks away from me and I get it, but he doesn't get it. So I said to him, you probably want to start on the antiviral because we've been gone for a week. So he had missed work and he could work from home, but he was, he came out and took a nap during the day, you know, very fatigued. So we started, he started on the antiviral um, and then I started on the antiviral. And in Minnesota, our protocol is to call in. There's a 24 hour nurse line. Um, they call you back and then they go through like a 20 minute kind of conversation and protocol situation with what medications you're taking because the antivirals for emergency use only. Um, but now, honestly, it's been tested on thousands and thousands of people. Um, and I've had two friends who took it and felt better the next day. And I will say that kind of happened to us too. After two doses, you take three giant pills in the morning and in the evening and um, for five days. And it's a doozy. So one of the side effects that you can get and not everybody gets is a metallic taste in your mouth. Ross got the metallic taste but each day, but it would go away. Mine stayed the entire time. Like it would start to maybe go away maybe right before I was supposed to take my next dose. And it was disgusting. I mean, really bad taste. Uh, so bad I didn't want to take the last day. I was like, I can't do this anymore. Mostly because I had to have something in my mouth constantly, like a Halls or a Ludens or a Ricola <laughs> or barbecue potato chips, anything to get that. Water was not cutting it. Soda was not cutting it. I don't drink coffee. I don't know if that would have helped. People said cinnamon, like um, Mentos and cinnamon stuff helps with it. But so for all day, every day, even at night, I was like sucking on something to get rid of that taste. It took away the illness and it takes down your viral load. Now I'm not a nurse or doctor, but from what I understand, it's similar to the antiviral that AIDS people take in that you can still test positive, but you are not contagious or you cannot infect other people. So someone who has the AIDS virus can be on the medication and it also can have this metallic taste as an after, you know, as a thing in your mouth, but you can be, they can be with a partner. Whereas we could still for days afterwards test positive, but our viral load would be so low that we wouldn't infect other people. So we both took our entire, took our doses um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and finished. And then we stayed home Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, we were, we would have been allowed to leave the house on, I would have been allowed to leave on Tuesday, Ross on Sunday of last week with a mask on, um, according to the nurse, but we just weren't comfortable with that. And, uh, I was still coughing. I still have a tiny little cough. My cough was very intermittent, but so productive. Just gross. I was gross. Hashtag Ross was sleeping in the bedroom upstairs and didn't come down. And I said, do you think we'll ever kiss again? He's like, not, no, you're gross. <laughs> it's like, I know. When I cough, I can't, you got to get it, you got to get it out, right? So we had very different symptoms. We were both very fatigued. I slept, I laid in the chair. When I slept all night, <clears throat> you know, I was waking up. We both had like fever chills, but never ran a fever. So like we get really hot, sweat at night but then not have a fever. Um, so it was just weird. So I got really behind. I wasn't caught up on the sock thread in the Ravelry group on Instagram. I have not been, I just, you know, you kind of have to take time off, but I also had to cancel sweater camp at my house. And I was devastated. Cause I lost my dog. And that's been super sad. And then we went to Arizona and we came home to a house with no dog and I was having company. So Matt and Stacy and Amber and Bonnie and Sarah and Renee and uh, Tiffany and Samantha. I mean, they were all, well, we're gonna, you know, we we're Josh, we we're gonna try to get together and be together. <clears throat> and Ross got 
tested positive. And was that, that would have been Wednesday. Yeah. And they were all flying in on Thursday. And I had, I mean, I had to call them right away and say, Hey guys, I don't. And then, you know, we scrambled. We were for a few, an hour or two, we were like, okay, can we, can they go to a hotel? And then if Corey doesn't get it, could she join? And then it just felt really bad, especially for Amy or for Amber and Stacy, because they had plane tickets, right? And then when you have to call someone and say, hey, you know, is it refundable? Can you exchange it? But the airlines are pretty good because of COVID right now. They don't want you to fly if you have COVID. <clears throat> so they canceled. I sold my sweater camp pass to Sarah. Sarah and Matt got together and watched some of the speakers. And by the time they would have arrived, I was getting pretty sick. I, I was, I wasn't, I was not feeling good and did not test positive. I took two tests on Thursday, two on Friday, and finally on Saturday tested positive, but I had been sick for the, you know, those couple of days. And that I heard the nurse also say to me, that's very common once you have exposure for it not to come positive for several days, two to three days. So it really stunk. It just, I have not seen Amber or Stacy in a year. Uh, well, no, not a year, half a year, Shepherd's Harvest in May. And they can't do, sh or uh, Amber can't do Shepherd's Harvest this year because Heidi's graduating. Oh, it was, it just, and so then I'm laying in my house alone, quiet with my husband. We're quarantining and we don't have a dog and we're well, both sad and we're mad that we have COVID. It just, it really stunk. And I tried to work on design work while I was in Arizona, but mostly I knit. I went to, you know, two different knitting groups, which was super fun. And, uh, and I was doing some design work, but mostly I was knitting for myself and working on that sweat on um, my Soldatna sweater. And so I got behind because mm -hmm. starting Monday, coming back, I would have worked all day, every day that week to get all my patterns up and going. And I have people waiting and I need this, the test knitters to get going because people, I just have schedules for myself. It's just knitting, right? So I can, I can move along. I can push things out if I have to, but I like to kind of keep myself on a calendar of events that when things need to happen. So I needed to get out the pattern for this hat and cowl and I didn't have the, the hat done, so I sent the cowl to tech editing, and I sent the sent blanket to tech editing, and then she was she had been waiting, but of course she got to get on her schedule. I love my new tech editor, by the way, she's awesome. So that stunk. So I got I got very behind, and then I just couldn't concentrate. Like I would sit and look. I had a problem with this hat. And I would sit and look and try to figure out how to fix it. And it's like in the light of day when you're feeling well, it's not a problem to make an I-cord edge and know what side to put it on. But when you're sick and you're taking NyQuil and, well, before I was taking NyQuil and then this antiviral and sleeping and coughing and ugh, I just, I didn't get it done. So all that to say, that's why things, you know, really didn't, Lots of things didn't happen that could have happened and now I'm behind. So people are helping me catch up. I sent out a, a distress signal. And why does this always happen to me? I am always in the, you know, surrendering the white flag and saying, help, will you, will people help me? You know, I, I was looking through Stacy when I went to look for the name of this pattern because I couldn't remember it. I was looking through Stacy's feed and she has knit so much of my stuff. Like so many of my things, Stacey. I was like, wow. And then I look at it and I'm like, yeah, she knit that for me because I was having surgery. Oh yeah, she knit that for me because I was behind. Oh yeah, you know, that it, it, with all my organization and planning, I still am not incorporating enough time into my schedule to handle COVID or surgery or whatever I have going on in my life, apparently. So anyway. That's why things got behind. So what you knit and Corey section is a lot of the same things, even though I got quite a bit of knitting done. So I could work on this during, while well, I was sick and it's so close to being done and I wanted it to be a finished object today, 
but it's not. This is my brioche slip over and it is knit out of that <clears throat> kind of fun yarn um, that I ordered, but this came from overseas. So it was most more expensive to get. So this is the Lanus du Nord Forenza yarn and it's merino wool, but it's that lovely same kind of yarn, fluffy, and it weighs absolutely nothing. And this is the um, brioche slip over. So it's brioche stitch knit flat up at the top and then it goes up and over the shoulders. I explained that to you and then it's cropped. So I have a skein and a half left and I'm supposed to pick up around the armholes and knit a little edge, but can you see how far out they are? I talked about that. I may leave them like this. I'm gonna try it on with my shirt that I have on today and see what how, I'm gonna put this on a cord and see how I like that, just that. Cause it's not too bad of a, it's not like a raw edge and picking it up and adding like this is gonna make it really wide. And maybe I'll like that. So I'll do that next and then go as far as I can on the body. So I got some knit on that while I was sick. I could like sit up and do that, which is, that was kind of fun. So I did get some of that done. Then my carry along project is a Cotty Wample cowl out of this, and I only had it cast on last time. So out of this sparkly, colorful, really fun yarn, and it's turning out really cute. This is my like car knitting we, we did. I knit it on the way in the car last night, so I just, carried this in my purse it's kind of like a sock or whatever when you just have it so I have all my little markers on so when I pick it up I don't have to if I was just sitting at home I wouldn't need all those markers but it's just a two row repeat on that Cotty Wample cowl there's no ribbing at the bottom or the top it just had it just blocks out to have these little points super simple and an easy carry along project and you could knit it with just about any weight of yarn so that is that and then I worked, I didn't work on Sven and Solve, the little dolls, but I got the green yarn in the wool from Barrett Wool. And I did have to email him and say, hey, you know, I'm still waiting on that green yarn. And um, he's like, oh, I totally forgot. So he shipped it and I got it. So now I can finish up those Sven and Solve dolls, which I really was barreling along on those until I figured that I found out that I was short a skein of yarn. So now, and they sent me a full skein, which I think I should have only gotten half, but at that point, I'm sure he was like, just get this woman her yarn. Um, so I'll see if I get to work on that at any point. I'm trying to let myself knit for myself like a little bit each day, just to, for my own sanity. And then I worked on the Soldatna a little bit before I got sick one night. And I don't like my next color choice, so I'm going to show you guys and... I don't know if you're going to even be able to see it, but so yeah, you're not going to be able to see. Um, so I was doing pink and yellow, blue and pink, pink and yellow, pink and yellow, orange and blue, pink and yellow, pink and yellow. And now I was doing yellow and orange as my next color choice because I only have four colors and the Soldatna calls for five, which is fine. Lots of people did it with four. But I think, if you can see here, I think this needs to be blue. I think this section, and I didn't want to do orange and blue again, so I could do blue and orange, but the next section below that is the body, and the body is yellow, because that's what I have more, it's this. That's what I have the most yarn of. I only I bought extra skein of this, so I can't do it in any other color. And you're supposed to have this next section have the yellow so that it goes right into the next yellow so you don't get another line, if that makes any sense to anybody. <clears throat> but, so, and then the yellow has what we would call lice in it. So you knit, you know, five with a little blip of, of two colors. So it's spotted, it's speckled at the bottom, you speckle it, or you can make it solid. So I could swap out these two colors, which are now, you know, these few rows that I have here that are yellow and orange to have the blue in there. I just have to decide if I want it to be orange and blue, yellow and blue, or blue and orange again. 
Like should my, I just don't know if I want a big swath of blue across my boobs. Like that's the problem is that it'll be the darkest part of the sweater and it'll be right across my chest. So I think I should do the orange with the blue, but then it's gonna really match this. So this should have been blue and orange. The next section should be orange and blue. But do I wanna rip out all that knitting? No, no, I do not. And I know I, I always say. regret ripping back. And if I were, if I'd made a mistake, that's true. But I think I like this orange with blue. So maybe it won't matter if I do orange with blue again. And maybe that was just COVID brain talking last week. But yeah, when I went in to do the yellow and the orange, I thought, boy, this is really light and I don't have enough blue. So let me show you the pattern. You're all gonna chime in. Let's see how, this is the section I'm gonna do next, these Vs with the dots in them and how the yellow background is supposed to go into the yellow. Like I should have yellow in the background and go into the yellow. So if I do that as blue and orange and then I go into yellow, I'm gonna have another stripe right there, which honestly shouldn't matter. But then these little dots are two colored. So you do one row with a dot that's blue and one dot row with a dot that's orange or and the, my color here is yellow, or you can do that solid and then you have a different color at the bottom. And so since I started with pink, I was gonna end with pink at the bottom. You know, honestly, I don't think any of it matters. I think it will be cute and just fine no matter what color I do. No one is gonna stand back and go, she should have made those chevrons orange, right? Do you guys second guess sometimes your color choices? But I think it has to do with the fact that I'm doing four colors instead of five. And I just, that's what I bought. I bought four colors instead of five of this Suburban Stitcher and that's what I've got. So that's what I'm gonna use. Um, that's my story. I had five stitches fall off. So I'm stitching, I'm sticking to it, stitching to it. That's funny. So I'm stitching to it. Um, anyway. Yeah, I bought a new little, uh, I, I need these right now. Where did I lay those? Whoops, now they just fell on the floor. Of course they did. I'm getting warm, so, and I had to get this off the floor. So the shawl is off. Mm -hmm. These are what I just bought. I got them in my advent box for Christmas, and they're little end protectors, which I don't use very often, but obviously I need to. <laughs> I have the silver tubes that I like better to shove them on. So I bought these to give away, but now that my stitches just <laughs> fell off, I should probably keep a pair for myself. So these come from Twice Sheared Sheep. Um, they have different sizes for the needles that are gonna stick in there. They're called cable locks. I'm sure you can buy these at like a fabric store. Um, these weren't expensive, $7 maybe? For four of them, I bought two packs to give away. But that's how they work. You just clamp them on. Now, in my defense, I do think that you have to keep track of these little things, right? And that's why I like my tubes, because they're big, the, the metal ones that just slide over the end. Um, cause you, but I do think you could tie a piece of yarn through there, and then you would be able to loop it and clip it click it on something if you stuck a piece of yarn through it. I don't think that would get in a way of how it worked. No, it wouldn't. So that would be my recommendation to keep track of it. Let's Bye. quickly talk about behind the curtain, what I'm designing, kind of a sneak peek of what's coming up. This was my problem piece this week. It's so pretty. The colorway is so pretty. It's kind of that color of the year, which is what we are going for. And I made the cabled cowl just wide, has wider cables and wider. And then this is going to be the coordinating hat. So I knit the piece and then this goes around your head. That's the, the concept. And then you pick up along the top edge and you just close, you just decrease down and close it up. And I've knit hats like this before. They're super fun to knit. They work up really quickly. But I did not like my edge that I made along here. Can you see it? There we go. 
So I had a bumpy edge because I thought that would be really cute on your forehead, right? If you had like this little bumpy edge <laughs> right along there, right? I thought that would be cute, but I don't like it. It, it rolled in. I didn't put garter in there because I want to keep this band narrow. And in order to keep the cables chunky, the band has to be so wide to coordinate with the cowl. And so I didn't like how much it rolled in that someone, even if I, when I, if I blocked it, I was afraid it was going to roll in too much. Now I'm going to block it and see if it does because my option then, and I'll show you the, the option. This is how it turned out. It's co totally different colorway because um, I'm doing this in two colors, but this is the second option. And this is how the top of the hat just, you just pick up quick and then you just decrease. And these are the cables and it's wet and it um, it's not quite as chunky as, but I put an eye cord around the bottom, which did not roll, but just a little bit. And I like that finished edge, but it's too tight, which I was afraid of when I was knitting it. It's just a tad tighter than the stockinette above it, which has some give. I, I fit it on, but I had to go like that, you know? So no one's gonna like that concept. So now I think I'm gonna go back to the drawing board, which means I have to rip this one out even though I blocked it last night and add and just do a garter, a th little three stitch garter along this bottom edge, unless this blocks really well and pins out and doesn't roll and then I'll use this. So the pattern is written, I'm just fussing with this edge <laughs> all the way down, which I didn't block because I got frustrated. And this knits up really quick too. Like I did the, uh, this one yesterday in a couple of hours in the afternoon, the little piece that goes around your head and you just knit it like 20 inches long with just a little bit of pull. And then you kitchener it together and you whip the top. It's just the process of getting like these cables, like on the cowl, they all cross right. And on the hat, I thought, oh, they should cross. Cause there are three on the cowl, so they all cross the same way. Um, but there are only two, so I thought they should cross opposite so I swapped that out so I ripped it out and started re-knitting again you know it's just all those little things that you have to think about how to make how to make everybody happy and I had a slip stitch edge on this one on the other edge so that I thought well you come around and you'll just pick up one in each slip stitch but that's not enough stitches for that crown of the hat you need more stitches than every other row so that wasn't gonna work. So this piece doesn't work for sure anyway. But the slip stitches looked really nice, but they also rolled in, but that's fine because you're just picking up along that edge. So anyway, <laughs> all that for a hat that really, it, the concept is there, I just haven't quite figured it out. And that's a collaboration and it's supposed to come out in February. Well, hmm, imagine that. So I'm <clears throat> doing a testing call this week for the cowl because the cowl's done. Tech editor um, emailed today. She's working on it. So that will be back. And so the, the cowls can get tested. I just need to finish the hat. And it really should only take testers a couple days. But once again, <laughs> and it would have been done a week ago Tuesday. I would have been doing all this, but I'm, I'm behind by a week. Okay. Then I have, uh, I did a testing call for the five blankets that I'm knitting. So I'm doing an ebook of baby stuff. So I'm doing a bunch of baby stuff because I want to do my bobber hat as a pattern. <clears throat> and I want to do some baby booties. I want to do some baby or some blankets, just some blankets, easy to knit blankets for like advanced beginners with checklist patterns and stuff. And so I, I started off thinking, okay, I'm going to do this whole baby collection. And then I, I've like completely swung the other direction. So each of my blankets will be available in five sizes. So it'll go all the way from baby to like a lap gan to a, you know, car seat cover up to an adult extra large blanket. So there'll be multiple sizes. And since I'm a little behind, I have, I had cast on one and got it going. And then I have borders sample borders for like two or three, but I can't knit five blankets in the next, you know, week. Like I, I just physically cannot get them all done 
but the patterns are getting, we're getting really close. So I said to my tech editor, you know, they're all gonna be very, like all the sizing is the same. The stitch patterns are all different. The borders are different, but um, you know, they need to be knit up, I need samples. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna just put this in my testing call um, for the little knitted sachets. So the little knit word sachets that have all the words on them. Uh, I put the testing call out for those. And I think I have 13 different charts that I'm doing for those. And that they, it all filled. Like people were so generous with their time in knitting. I got five sample knitters and I can't even pay them. Like I said, I, I really can't pay you. I can give you my patterns. I can give you my knitting book. Um, I can give you yarn like from my D stash. Like, but I don't have enough money to like pay you all to sample knit these big blankets, right? Like it would just, yeah. So they, they all chimed in. And I didn't, I don't have the patterns back, so I'm waiting um, to get them out to them today and tomorrow. Um, because So I shipped yarn and had sh yarn shipped. And one person, thank you, offered to use her own yarn from her stash because she said, I have such a big stash and I just really want to use it up. But you can keep the sample, which I need it for photography. That's why I need the samples is for photography for the patterns. And there's not like a super hard, that's my project but I really wanted it to come out in March. I just don't know that it's, if I'm gonna make it happen, but it's okay. Uh, so I got that all shipped out. And so the five blankets are, I was working, Friday night I worked until midnight. Last night I worked until midnight, getting like tweaking and making sure like that everything is, is looking fine. The tech editor is getting back to me and saying, you know, she believed that there should be like an extra stitch, cast on one more stitch between the border and the textured stitch. And I'm like, oh, that totally makes sense. Yes, good idea, right? So now the patterns, all, all five patterns should have a extra stitch. It's just that kind of stuff where somebody says to you, this would make the pattern just a little bit better. You decide, right? Anyway, and then I still have to do that chunky hood with the fur around it, which shouldn't take long. The pattern is um, a recipe right now, like I've written, <laughs> but it's not knit. So that's what I'm designing. Then I'm, I still need to finish up my children's book project. So I have three children's book ideas and um, two of them are written. I just don't think they're, they're done. They're the, like not done, they need work. And every time I go and work on them, I work on them. And then um, I think, gosh, this still needs some more work. So, and I need to just reach out to the two publisher people that I know, but I'm afraid that they might say, hey, send us what you've got and it's not done, right? <laughs> so I feel like they should be done, but that's what an ed editor's for, right? They edit and they will help you. I don't know. So the children's books are still there for me. I still have really good and these are not knitting pattern books, but they're children's books about knitting. My next segment, <laughs> don't tell my checkbook. I watch the three ply podcast ladies and they say, don't tell my husband. Well, my husband sees everything and I don't care, but. So I bought some yarn and I haven't been purchasing a lot of yarn, but I wanted to knit this slip over. I think I shared it with all of you and I wanted yarn for it. And so I found this on sale. And this is that same yarn. And now that I know that about the Wonder Fluff, I probably could have used the Wonder Fluff, but this is called Laja, L-A-J-A, -A, a luxurious blend of baby alpaca, fine merino wool, and polyamide. It's that same stuff. And that's what's used for that slip over pullover. And so, and I have several colors, uh, single um, skeins of other colors in this. So, but I purchased the orange um, for that vest. Because I think that will work up super fast. I mean, it's bulky, right? And it's so cute. Oh, so I purchased that. And then a while back, back I purchased this kit. And this is from Zen Yarn Garden. And it was a kit on their Instagram. And here's the sweater but I need to show you the color. So this is the Ladyfinger sweater by More Thunder. And um, it's done in a really neutral palette in the on the pattern page, but the Zen Yarn Garden people did it up in this colorway. Uh, those are the things that I purchased that Knit Picks 
um, Wonder Fluff and then those two things. Did you all see on the Darn It Anyway Instagram page a picture of some square wood knitting needles in the Cori palette? And they are amazing. Like, I love square needles. I love wooden needles. Someone of a square needle company needs to sponsor me because I would shout that to the rooftops. And um, so I ordered it. I, I don't really need a whole nother set of needles, but I do have needles that I'm short on, like certain sizes and stuff. So I went ahead and ordered it. It comes with a knitting bag and a uh, tape measure and um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different needle sizes and a cord and some, oh, I am just so excited. It, it was a pre-order situation, so they were ordering kits and um, packages of this, and then they'll ship them in March. So I should have them in the next couple weeks, and I'll show them to you, but they're still available on the website. It's quite a pricey kit, in my opinion. You can get needles for cheaper elsewhere, but these are really nice, and I'm so excited about a bright colored, you know, square set of needles, so. I thought I should share that just in case anybody else wants to dive in on that. Okay, what have I been watching? So I did not watch a lot uh, while I was sick. I listened to audiobooks um, and then I would turn it off and then I would sleep and then I would wake up and listen again. But I have been watching the show on Netflix called The Recruit. I like it. It's pretty good. It's about a guy who graduated as a lawyer uh, and got... Um, recruited by the CIA. So he's new, he's the young rookie, and they kind of make him out to be dumb or stupid or to not know enough. And he gets thrown into a couple of cases right away off the bat where, you know, he's got to fly across the world and try to save, you know, <laughs> save someone. But it got picked up for a second season. And those are kind of shows I like where people, they're getting support because people really like it. And so, yeah, I'm almost done with the first season and yeah, I'm enjoying it. Then I watched Wednesday, which is the Wednesday Adams show. So I finished that up. It was okay. Um, and then I watched a show about uh, like kind of kind of a docu series, documentary about a woman who went um, north and lived off the land with her boyfriend in like the late seventies, and they lived up north. It's woman in the wild kind of situation where. You know, they, they literally lived off the land and built their own cabin and stayed there through the winter and canoed out in the spring and then went back again for another entire winter. And, um, and then years later, she is not with that guy anymore and she meets another man and then they take their son, um, a, a young boy, and they live out in the wilderness again. So that, that was interesting. I kind of like those kind of shows where you can kind of have them back in the background and learn some some things so that was good and then i watched um one of those life in england shows from back in the day uh kind of the poverty and the bad part of town where people were surviving so and it's kind of it's not a reality show they literally take people who want to go do that for like 30 to 60 days and they put them in the squalor and they make them try to get by and live off what they have and, and they're, they, don't, they don't have enough food and they don't have enough heat and they can't pay their rent. And yeah, so that, that was really interesting too. Um, yeah, so I would recommend those, pretty good. Okay, I have a couple of things that I saw on the internet that I wanna share today. Um, the first one is, I saw this really cute wallpaper and if anyone is decorating, a kid's room, a baby room, uh, a knitting room. Oh my gosh. So this is wallpaper from Spoonflower where designers can go in and design their own wallpaper. Look at how cute that is. Those are sheep, but from a distance, oh, so cute. And they have it in tons of colors. And this particular woman had several different wallpaper designs that had to do with sheep and knitting so um her username is ro cuckoo r-o-u-c-o-u-c-o-u -O 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 -O. and she's a fabric 
designer or artist, graphic artist, and then you can get this in fabric or wallpaper. It would be really cute as like fabric or fleece or, ah, oh, I just thought it was so cute. It's on spoon flower. So I wanted to share that with everyone who would have known you could get sheep wallpaper, right? And then I saw this necklace and I, I think many of you probably also saw it on another podcast as well, but it's called Silfa. The company is called Silfa and it is a needle gauge necklace that is just stunning it's so i'll put a picture it is so pretty it's called my pearl knitting gauge necklace it it runs about 75 dollars um the website is in multiple languages so when you go to the website silfa s-i-l-f-a you have to pick at the top u.s to get it in english so that you can you can read it but they have um, earrings and necklaces that are all knitting. They have other things too, but this is knitting themed. So this is a beautiful silver necklace that you could wear around your neck, but it's also a needle gauge. I did not buy it, but I wanted to. <laughs> then I thought, buy it for yourself for Valentine's Day. I do not need a p another piece of knitting themed jewelry. I have a lot of knitting themed jewelry. And I'm not going anywhere these days, so I'm, I don't even put, I don't even put clothes on most, I'm in my pajamas, you know, a lot until one or two in the afternoon when I go exercise. Sometimes I just go on the computer and the next thing I know it's two o'clock. And uh, so I'm not even getting dressed up to go anywhere really, very rarely. So I thought, oh, you do not need to buy that, but it is really pretty. And then I saw two things on Instagram and I would like to give um, the both of them credit. The first one is from Com's Creative. I was looking at the buffet at a conference and I was like, oh, these mini cheesecakes are bloody disgusting. And the person I was talking to was like, I actually think they're quiches. So I had another bite and I was kind of like, mm, actually they're delicious. And I think about this every time I sense somebody doesn't like me, or maybe they think that my work's bad. I think they don't realize I'm a quiche. And she relates it to people, like how we sometimes we just don't like people. And, and then she says it's because, well, I don't want to give it away. So I'll stick that in here. Hopefully, hopefully you'll get to see that. And then the funniest one of the week, and I know it got reposted a couple times, but I didn't see it all over the internet. So if you haven't seen it, this is a car, a sign on a car window, and it says, he is okay, window is cracked, he has snacks and is listening to his favorite song. I am yarn shopping and will be back ASAP to walk with him. Her husband is in the car. <laughs> it is so funny. Like it's totally a setup, right? <clears throat> it's a knitter, Gotham Knits. She makes this sign. She makes her husband sit in the car and then she puts the sign on the window and then the window rolls down and it's her husband and not an animal, not a dog in the car. You know, <laughs> the window is cracked. He's listening to his favorite song. <laughs> I'm yarn knitting. I will be right back. Oh, so funny. People are so clever. I love that kind of stuff. All right. Um, I want to say that I'm going to be a part of Sock Madness. And the signups go through Tuesday. So I'm going to try to put this up a little earlier on Monday, just in case any of you want to knit challenging socks as fast as possible. So this used to be called Sock Wars back in the day. And if you like knitting complicated socks in a quick fashion, then you can participate in this. I think this is how it works. I didn't follow it closely last year, but they put up two sock patterns. You pick one, you knit it as fast as you can. You tap in when you have it knit, and then you move on. You can move on to the next round kind of a thing. And the, the fastest people move forward. But signups are now. So if you are at all interested, you can go to the Ravelry group and um, join, you know, join the group, uh, Sock Madness Forever. I think 
they go by or something. That's where the moderators, there are emails you can send if you're com confused. And some of you have done this for years, like you love just the challenge. And it doesn't, you don't even have to win, right? You just, you can participate by being part of knitting someone's sock quickly and see how you do and, and you know, take it off. Then I also wanna share that all of my patterns are going up in price. So um, I still have five and $6 patterns out there and I am going to go to the $7 map model so that all my patterns are about the same price. I may raise my sweater patterns that are size inclusive to $8 a pattern. And I'm gonna do that by March 1st. So I just wanna give everybody a heads up that if you wanna, if there was a pattern that you're looking at, you might wanna get for a dollar less. You could do that now. Okay, then um, let's do a second Corey Stories this week because although I had really crappy news <laughs> to share in the first one, I have really happy news to share in this one. Ross and I are getting a puppy <laughs> and I am so excited because it's giving me something to look forward to. When we were sick last week, I was crabby as you want to be because I was behind and I was missing my dog. And um, one night I sat up in the chair and I put the foot rest down and I was like, where is Cody laying? And that's the first time I've done that. And I was like, oh, and we want to have a dog. And most of you know that I am scheduled to have a shoulder replacement at the beginning of June. And so I went out and I want to give a little caveat here, a little be careful on the internet. So I went out last week when I was laying in the chair and I was just like looking on the internet, trying to find a chocolate Labradoodle. And I, we contacted our breeder and they're not going to have a standard litter um, for a while. And so they're, they're, they have minis coming and, and we don't want a mini because Ross wants to be able to run and we like having a big dog. We're not little dog people. And um, so I finally found this website and called puppyspot.com. And I found puppies and we were looking at a chocolate Labradoodle. We were also looking at two Bernadoodle puppies, which are Bernese mountain dogs with doodles. Now we need to have doodles or no shed dogs because Ross and Kylie are both have allergies. And, um, and plus we just don't want the mess of a highly shedding dog. Um, and so we're looking at breeders who are breeding with a standard poodle and not an F1, not a doodle to a doodle. That's an F2. So we want an F1. So a poodle with whatever, um, like a chocolate lab or in this situation, a Bernese mountain dog. So that's what we were looking at because they're tricolored. And, um, and so they had these three puppies and I, the lady called me um, from this website and she's like, yes, we, you know, um, they're available. One was in, in tour in Indiana, one was in Ohio. And then Ross came down and he was like, you know, who are you talking to? I said, well, she called. And then um, Ross said, okay, uh, you know, and I said, okay, well, you know, we're gonna keep looking, but we'll let you know. And then we looked at the reviews online and they were not good. And then we went to the Bitter Business Bureau and those were, those reviews were even worse. So people always got dogs from this website, but the dogs were not always healthy. It seemed like some vet checks were missed. Um, two people got dogs that were, that had some problems. So I don't, I don't know if it's a puppy mill situation. It, I, the gal was really nice. She said she'd vetted all of her breeders, but anyway, it, it was not a situation that we were looking to get into at all, right? And I wasn't getting the information about who the breeders were. This was like, she was like the clearinghouse, which is a little weird. And you know, so we just stopped going down that rabbit hole, right? But buyer beware. Um, so then I really started looking at these Burmy, Burmese, Bernadoodles. I'll get used to saying it. Bernese Mountain Dogs um, with a standard poodle. And I found a breeder and um, and the website was so developed and like super, all the information, the costs, the sires, the, the moms, 
they're registered, the, it's a family business, uh, everybody works at it, they do standards, all, all the, everybody's tested and they have a two-year guarantee. Like the information was all up front, right? And then you have to interview with them and they have a waiting list, a big waiting list. And I was like, hmm, that sounds a little more legit, right? People are waiting to get puppies from this, you know? So then he called me on Friday and I talked to him for a long time and uh, we passed, <laughs> you know, all the questions. Why do you want to burn a doodle? How, what is your experience with dogs? Um, what size dog are you looking for? What kind of temperament, what, you know? And I said, we want a quirky, goofy, fun, big dog. You know, um, this is what we're looking for. We need to have a doodle. Um, and, and he was so forthcoming, really a nice guy. And it, it costs... $500 to get on their waiting list. So people are not just, you know, waiting on a waiting list and then dropping off. Like you have to put your money where your mouth is if you're gonna, if they're gonna trust that you're, the dog is going to a good home. Um, they will take the dog, buy the dog back. If you are completely unhappy, they don't want to do that. But anyway, it was, you know, it was this whole process and they have a litter, <laughs> which is not, you know, what I was expecting but they have a litter of 11 puppies and um, it was a big litter, he said. And, uh, and they have eight males and three females. And so, and we want a male. And so we decided to put our name on the waiting list, but we're way down the waiting list. Um, and so how this works is you, it's visible on the website. You can see where you're at and how you move up. And he said, sometimes we go through the whole waiting list to get the litter, you know, chosen. So they let people choose at about the five to six week mark because they like to wait and decide if the pups have a curly coat or a wavy coat. So if you have a doodle, you know that they're born with, and Cody had a wavy coat, which means as he got longer and longer, he kind of got more like an Afro, like it, it just wasn't cur tight curly. He got more like shaggy for him. It like, so we had to keep him groomed closely and, and have him groomed much more often than like a curly coated dog. You still have to groom doodles because the, their curly coat can get very matted. But anyway, so they make that decision. Uh, they look at size. They'll know closer, like better what, who, which are the big pups and which, and they'll know their temperament better. Like if they're outgoing or they sleep all day, whatever. Um, so that can happen at five or six weeks. And then people, then they start at the top of the list and they go down. And he said, people drop off all the time for different reasons. They will drop off because it's winter. They don't want to start a puppy in the winter or they live in an apartment and taking a puppy out in the winter is, you know, not how they want to do it. Or, or they've moved or they're remodeling or they've had someone and have, they've had a death in the family. Like he said, there are all kinds of reasons that you can go down the waiting list, but we're way down. So there was four of the names were grayed out, which means that they have passed on this litter. Like they're waiting, but they do not want this litter. So four of the names are grayed out. And then there was a spot in spot number 14. And you can pay money to jump the line and move up if you're willing. That's how they run it. It's their business. They can choose to run it that way. And, and he said, I am not recommending that you pay to jump the line, but you can go from your spot up to spot number 14. And there are four names grayed out and there are 11 dogs. So if we wanna be assured a puppy from this litter and not get a mini, they have a mini litter as well, but we want a standard, then we could jump the line. So then I started playing the pity card, <laughs> full disclosure. Honey, how much do you love me? This could be my Valentine's Day present. We could jump the line. And he's like, I don't, oh, Corey, I don't know about jumping. Like, I said, this is the only thing that's giving me hope <laughs> as I'm laying in the chair. <laughs> I was terrible. I was pitiful. So we jumped the line. <clears throat> Bottom line, we're going to get a puppy at the end of March. So the really ironic thing about this whole situation, and I'm not going to give too much away about all of this, but I went on the website because we're going to drive and pick the puppy up. Obviously we, we want to go get it. I went and got Cody. Um, I flew out and flew back to get Cody from Ohio. 
um, Southern Ohio. And um, so one of the things I was looking at when I was looking at breeders, I found five different breeders. I was looking at where they're located, right? Like how far do we have to drive? Because I don't really want to drive to South Carolina. And this particular breeder is in the Southern Illinois area. And when I opened it up on the map, I could see Amberstown. And that was like meant to be, right? Like meant to be. I canceled sweater camp. I haven't seen her. I've never been to her town. We've always either met in Chicago or we've met at Rhinebeck or we've met at Stitches or we've, she's come to my house. She always comes here. I've never been to her town. I've never been to her house. And not that I like need to go invade her space, but like we, I could go, right? We could go on our way to get this puppy. So I called her that night at, a week ago. She was in bed. I'm like, can I call you? I have hope in my life in this moment. And I'm so excited. I just want to talk to someone. And she's like, oh my gosh. I'm like, doesn't it seem like it's meant to be? Like that the breeder is like not. And then so I told this guy that I was talking to. I'm like, hey, my best friend lives in. And he was like, we go through there all the time. So it, it was like, yeah, it was meant to be. So we got to have names. We have to have names. So right now, we really like Chevy because my husband's a Chevrolet guy. I mean, that's his favorite car. And so we really like that for a name. That's kind of that's kind of fun. I like Bixby a lot. I think that's fun. Ross thinks it's too hard to say. <laughs> we like um, Jimmy because Ross has a Jimmy truck and his dad's name was James. Um, yeah, we, I like Henry. Uh, we, have, we have a few off to the side, but we'll definitely be getting a male. It'll be a big, big boy, we hope, um, and tri-colored. So I'm going to put some pictures in here so you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, yeah, life changed. I do not want a puppy. I don't want to do a puppy. I have a friend who has trained their hunting dogs, and I said to her, because we're going to go meet with them next Saturday night, we're going to go out to dinner so we can talk to them about getting our dog trained better. Cody was well-behaved because he wanted to please, but in situations he would not obey. So like if someone came to the front door and I said, sit, he was more willing to go greet the person than to listen to his mom. If I called him to come, most of the time he would come. If I said sit, most of the time he would sit, unless there was a person at the front door or a dog. Like we have to break that, that like I do it when, I do it most of the time, but sometimes I don't. And that's on me, right? Like mom needs to get trained, but I really want my friend, my best friend, Julie. I lived with her for two years when I was first teaching and then she moved up here. I mean, we've been friends for uh, years and years. I want her husband to come live at my house for about six weeks and just deal with the potty training and the chewing. I said to Ross, we've had two puppies and they both destroyed things. Like you don't get through puppy face without losing something like, uh, our first dog ate the little ornamental tree in the front yard while we were gone. <laughs> ate half of it. It was a little round topped thing. On, and we came home and half of it was gone. It was snowy and he was on the snow bank and we had a dog door and he'd gotten out. It was a thing, but it, yeah. And then Cody ate the bench in the mudroom, the wooden built in bench. So, <clears throat> you know, you're bound to lose a shoe. Yeah, Yankee ate my eyeglasses when I was in the shower. Do you guys, oh my gosh. So I said, and Ross says, I'm home now. I work from home now. Because he didn't do it the last two times I did it. And so I said, you do not know what we're in for. Like you can't leave them alone for a minute. You have to be so, and it's like a year of that, you know, where you're just, oh, I don't want to do that part. I want the, I love the dog and the dog loves me. And I say, let's eat supper. And they go eat, you know, like. That's the part I want. But I also want a dog to bond. So anyway, we're going to do the puppy thing. Oh, I feel too old to get up in the night with a puppy. <laughs> but we crate train. I mean, well, it'll be fine. But And Ross is really good. Cody would almost always listen to Ross 100%. Like, because he's just more <laughs> gruff than me. So that's the good Corey stories. We're getting the puppy. <laughs> All right, let's do the audiobooks very quickly. 
but boy, did I read some good books this time. Oh my gosh, you guys, I read, I listened to one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, so good. One was a real shorty. So the one I just finished yesterday was called When Scars Are Scattered by Victoria Jameson and Omar Muhammad. And this was an Odyssey Honor audiobook, National Book Award finalist. It is a graphic novel, but I listened to it on audio and it is done as a narration of a bunch of different characters, um, different readers, almost as a dialogue with background sounds, <clears throat> almost like you're listening to a movie. It was excellent. Omar and his younger brother, Hassan, have spent most of their lives in D Dadaab, a refugee camp in Kenya. Life is hard there, never enough food, achingly dull and without access to medical care. Um, it is the story of these Somali refugees and they've lived in these camps for seven years. The camps have become small poverty towns, like they have little markets and they have little schools because they've, these people have lived there so long. It was eye-opening, honestly. I did not realize. Um, and the lack of food and the, it, it was really well done. It's a four hour audio book. And if you have children, I think it would be a, just an amazing graphic novel. Highly, highly recommend Where's, When Stars Are Scattered. Rain, which I, re I really liked. I thought it was so good. This is Allie Hazelwood, so there's a little naughty in here. Um, like an, an avenging purple-haired Jedi bringing balance to the mansplained universe, B lives by a simple code. What would Marie Curie do <laughs> if NASA offered her the lead on a neuroengineering project, a little literal dream come true after years scraping by in crumbs of academia, Marie would accept without hesitation. Sure, Levi is attractive in a tall, dark, and piercing eyes kind of way, and sure he caught her in his powerfully corded arms like a romance novel when she accidentally... Uh, damseled in distress on her first day in the lab, but Levi made his feelings toward be very clear in graduate school, so they meet years later. It was lovely. It was a really interesting story. It was all about neuroscience, working in labs, what they're working on, research. Um, she's super smart. She's very, um, a lot kind of anti-men and the way that she's been treated, um, rightly so. Um, but yeah, it, you know, they get together and don't and yeah. I really, I did like it. Before that, I read Inheritance Games and I've already put the second book on hold. I'm so excited to read the second one. I thought it was going to be, you know, weird and a Hunger Gamesy, Not at all. Avery Grams has a plan for a better future. Survive high school, win a scholarship and get out. But her fortunes change in an instant when billionaire Tobias Hawthorne dies and leaves Avery virtually his entire fortune. The catch, Avery has no idea why or even who Tobias Hawthorne is. To receive her inheritance, Avery must move into a sprawling, secret, passage-filled Hawthorne house where every room bears the old man's touch. So she has to move in with these family members who are mad. And she's a high school girl, and she's just inherited billions. It was so interesting she has to solve some puzzles to find some clues to figure out why this man would have left her this money. She doesn't seem to be related in any way, does not know if she's ever met the man um, in her life or seen him. He, you know, he's passed away and then she arrives on the doorstep at the reading of the will and the whole family is up in arms and they have all been living off the old man for many, many years. So a, a really great story, great premise. I I couldn't put it down. I couldn't stop listening. So that I really loved. Then I read Dying Wishes, which is book number two in one of the Molly McRae series. She's the murder mystery writer that writes about the knitting shop. And now I'm like totally in love with this series. The first one I thought was a little light. Um, it had some good character development. And now I, uh, yeah, I'm going to read them all. So so good. Always up for trying something new. Kath and her friends from the Fiber and Needlework Group, TGIF, thank goodness it's fiber, are visiting Cloud Hollow Farm for the day to learn the art of dying. With spring in the air, the friends he head out to greet the sheep, but the sheep are more interested in something. Two bodies spread under a tall tree, and one of those bodies is someone they know. 
so murder mystery. But, you know, you get more into the characters. You find out more about the ladies who work at the shop. You find more um, about Kath and how she's an inherited the shop from her grandmother. But it does have this element of there is this ghost that lives in the shop or in the house that her grandmother had that talks to her. Um, kind of it is kind of a quirky sidekick. Um, and that part was weird to me in the first book, but now I'm used to it and it does it doesn't it doesn't really bother me. But you should be aware that that, that, that goes on. So I did I did really like that. And then I listened to a scary, scary psychological kind of thriller, um, which I don't usually do. And then I really like this one too. I had like four in a row that were like almost five star reviews for me. This is called Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Jillian McAllister. And it like has a ton of positive reviews. So I thought, okay, um, late October after midnight, you're waiting up for your 18 year old son. He's past curfew you. As you watch from the window, he emerges and you realize he isn't alone. He's walking toward a man and he's armed. You can't believe it when you see him do it. Your funny, happy teenage son kills a stranger right there on the street outside your house. You don't know who, you don't know why. You only know your son is now in custody, his future shattered. And then you wake up and it's yesterday. So this woman wakes up a day before and a day before to figure out if she can change what happens on the night she sees her, hunt, her son murder this man outside their front door. I thought it was weird. I thought I wasn't going to like it. I thought it would be really confusing for her to go back in time. And then I, the more I read, the more I'm like, oh, I don't know. Like, is she going to continue to go back? And I, I really enjoyed it. It is a plot twister at the end. It is a kind of a page turner. Um, really interesting. The decisions she has to make, like, should she change things? Will that change things in the future or not change things in the future if the next day she goes back another day or will she go back forward? It was psychological, but and not like super freaky, scary, like slasher. Just really interesting and ended up being really well written and I really enjoyed it. So <laughs> that was very good too. So I had Inheritance Games, loved it. Love on the Brain, loved it. Uh, dying Wishes, loved it. Wrong Time, Wrong Place, loved it. And then I read A Beautiful Crime, which would have been really good if it hadn't been after four Corey really liked him books. Like it was, it was good, but I think if I had read it prior to, yeah, I would have liked it even more. One of the reasons that I think I miss reading hardcover books is the covers. A cover can really speak to me. And so when I look at a cover, even in Libby, I get a guttural uh, emotional response. And this book had a really ugh, cover. I just didn't like the cover. And so I think going into the book, I thought, oh, it's just not gonna be good. But it ended up being a, a beautiful crime about a crime that has a huge plot twist. Uh, it was, it was quite good. Um, when Nick and his boyfriend Clay meet up on the Grand Canal in Venice, they have a plan in mind and it doesn't involve a vacation. Nick and Clay are running away from their turbulent lives in New York, each desperate for a happier, freer future someplace else. The, their method of escape, selling a collection of counterfeit antiques to a brash, unsuspecting American living out his retirement years in a grand palazzo. So they have this plan they have backgrounds in antiques. So if you like antiques, you will love this. They go to Venice if you love Venice. Uh, it's a, set in Venice. And uh, and then they, it goes back in time and it will tell Clay's story. And then it goes back in time and tells Nick's story to get you up to where you are while it's telling the current what's happening and how they're going to try to con this man. And then it's got a plot twist. Without the plot twist, I would have said the book was not worth you know, even though the, the crime is planned and they're getting away with the crime, then the plot twist happens and, and you get really sucked back in. So, um, again, it was a good one. But, you know, I'm not going to give it a five like the other ones. I'd give it a four, right? So, yeah, I had I just had great reading while I was <laughs> sick. I just listened and listened to 
to everything. And now I started another one and I'm loving it. It's a sequel to one I read before, which I didn't know. And yeah, so I'll talk about that next time, but really, really good. Okay, let's do the giveaways and then we're done. So the winner uh, from episode 114 last week who answered the question, what season do you like? You know, what's your favorite season? Do you like spring, summer, cold weather? Because I'd come back from Arizona to the cold weather. They are winning the skein of yarn and the little stitch marker case. And the stitch markers from Twice Your Cheap. So that is already in the envelope. I was trying to get really organized and get ready to go. So that is in the envelope. And I drew uh, for the winner. And the winner from the podcast comments, there were 99, is Connie Crick. So Connie, get in touch with me at Corey at irocknits.com and send me your address and I will put that in the mail to you. Connie Crick. I looked up on Ravelry, Connie Crick, and Instagram just to see if someone would pop up so I could send you a message, but I didn't find it under your first and last name, so you probably have a fun um, Ravelry name or Instagram name that I don't know. So let me know uh, your address, and I'll get that in the mail. I have the two sock prizes. The socks, Cal, is still going on all the way. We have at least a month, five weeks left. You can easily knit a pair of DK socks. Some of you could knit fingering socks in five weeks. Some of you could knit several pair in five weeks. The Ravelry thread just blew up while I was sick. And thank you, thank you to Suzanne <laughs> for commenting for people and hanging in there and helping out. And Danielle, you made a bunch of comments too. That was really nice because I just wasn't, I could have done it. I just wasn't thinking about it, right? Like I just wasn't thinking, oh, you need to go in the Ravelry thread. And so when I went in there today, I was like, oh my gosh, Corey, you've missed a ton of posts, a ton of comments. And then I looked in. People had kept it going, which is so nice. So I did make some comments. I did love some posts. I, yeah. So for the Ravelry prize, I drew from the chatter thread a Ravelry winner, and that's Alchemy, and that's Diane from Minneapolis. So Diane, get in touch because I will be gifting you a prize. I have mini skeins and um, stitch markers to give. And then the winner from Instagram, the hashtag irocksocks23, does not have that many posts on it. I think there were only 30 posts, and a lot of them are doubles. If you guys are on Instagram, take pic pictures of your partial socks and post them and put irocknits as your hashtag. Iroc I rock socks 23 is your hashtag because you could win a prize easily. I think I've given prizes to everybody who's posted in that thread. And the winner there is Danielle Brown from Lexington, Kentucky. Danielle DM Brown 240. I drew your name from out of one out of 29 posts in the Instagram. And so you will be getting a set of mini skeins and some stitch markers from me as well. Names and addresses, please, all of you. Then the giveaway for next week is right here. I've got a bunch of little pieces. I have one more pink case to give away, which is this one that has like all the little things for like your double pointed needles or your interchangeable sets or pens or markers or whatever. Um, it's got a bunch of different zippers. And then I have this really fun slap wrist bracelet that has um, shoe sizes on it. So you can measure people's shoes I, to know what size to make for socks. This comes from Twice Sheared Sheep. I think it's super cute, really good idea. Easy to keep in your, you know, in your, in your stuff and carry around if you ever needed to measure for, uh, it goes kids all the way up to adult. Super clever, so go over to Twice Sheared Sheep. I have some cabled um, cable needles, and these are my favorite kind that have the little grooves in them, wood cable needles in three different sizes that I will be giving out. And um, so yeah, that is the, and then I have two of these dishcloths that you can put in water, right? And I have a ton of these, and so I decided to throw two of these in there. Um, and they become really nice little dishcloths dish for, your, for your sink in the kitchen. So 
next week's prompt for underneath in the comments so if you make comments you're in for a prize for this prize for next week is what kind of exercise do you do so i have been outside walking i walked when i was sick outside one day like to the corner and back just to be outside my house um, to get some fresh air some sunlight in my eyeballs and then in the last few days i've been walking every day and i've worked myself back up to walking a mile um, it takes me up 20 minutes, um, not going very fast. Um, I still have a little bit of like congestion in the morning. And so I don't feel like my breath is great. Um, and I get my hip gets a little tired because I, it's saying to me, you just sat for another 10 days. <laughs> no, not 10, a week. You just sat for another week, laid in a bed. So again, you get out of shape. Gosh, it just is just like this for me. <laughs> it's cyclical. Um, so yeah, my, um, my gluten-free diet is going fine. My tummy is no better. I'm not nauseous in the morning. So that went away. So that is better, but I'm still having a very upset tummy all day. So the gluten is helping with the weight. It will help, but it, and I get pretty much given up, um, most sugar. I mean, that sugar that's added and stuff, but I've given up my sugar, um, and I'm trying to limit my pop intake, my Diet Coke intake, because um, I would have two every day. Um, and so, and that can really work with, I know, don't come at me folks, it's my big one vice. Um, and I'm hooked, like I really, really enjoy it. And I know it like can create havoc, those artificial sweeteners with your microbiome in your gut. So that's probably part of it too. So I'm, working on all that, you know, trying to, <laughs> trying to be a better soul, <laughs> better person, do, do all the right thing. It's hard. It's hard being good. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, let me know what kind of exercise you do. Um, I follow a lady on Instagram who does inst uh, exercise for beginners. Like if you've never exercised, she's really good. She does stuff against the wall. She does stuff in chairs, just like very, but it, really when I was recovering from my hip, like I would sit in the chair and she has you raise, just raise your legs up and down, up and down, up and down, and then move your foot out to the side, like super simple. But if you haven't done exercise in years or you can't, or you don't think you can, Google some of those exercises for beginners or people who've, who haven't exercised in a while. Um, I'll try to find her, I can't remember her handle, but I, I probably have it. And I'll, I'll put it in the notes below if I can, if I can find what her handle is. It's, it's something different. Anyway, but I, yeah, I really do. And it comes up in my Instagram feed. I like to follow things like healthy food, good cooking, people who exercise, because then when you're scrolling, you see it. It's a, it's like a subconscious reminder. Yeah, you need to do this too. <laughs> so yeah, that's where we're at. Okay. I forgot to share the bag. <laughs> it's the most important part. I hung it on the mannequin. Lovely Sandy, Queen Sandy, Best Bud Sandy sent bags for the sock, Cal, prizes. She made a giant project bag. It says I Rock Knits with the rocks here and the rocking chairs. It's just awesome. And then she made two drawstring bags, flat bottomed. The fabric is so cute. These will both be given away as Sock Cal prizes. So join the Sock Cal, knit some socks, any I Rock Knit Sock designs. My easiest one is my Up North Cabin Socks. That is for beginners. They are checklist patterns. My Pairs of Socks collection all has DK weight socks for every sock. Then I have my Shanana Friend Socks and my Mr. Tom's Field. We've talked about these. If you've never knit socks, you do not have to knit them to a certain height or length, but um, they do have to be in the stitch patterns from one of my pairs of socks. And then the hashtag is irocksocks23 for Instagram, or just go over and chatter in the thread, post what color you're using, post when you're gonna cast on, post your toe, post your heel, whatever. 
um, in the chatter thread because that's where I draw from every two weeks. So I have a couple drawings left before we even get to the winners at the end. I've got great prizes. I have a whole um, sweaters quantity of yarn. I've got three bags. I've got mini skeins. I have all kinds of accessory tchotchkes. Yeah, and not a ton of people participating. So get out there and knit some socks. Lastly, I just got asked to teach. So I'm going to be teaching at Stephen B. in March, on the 26th of March. On a Sunday afternoon, I'm teaching Latvian and Vickle Braids. That is a three-hour afternoon class. You're getting two skeins of yarn, two knitting hat patterns. You will start knitting both hats in the class. I'll do Corey's two-color cast on. It's a really fun class. It's a one-time shot. Um, so you might want to take a look at that if you're local to me. That's um, on 35th and Chicago, Minneapolis, especially if you've never been to Stephen B. You need to go tomorrow. Um, and then I will be teaching my Skeins to Skeins game. So they're going to have an event in April. And um, yeah, that's not on the website yet. So watch for that to come up. But yeah, I'm going to be doing that at the end of April. And we're just working out the details on that. So you could take a look at that if you wanted to go to a knitting event. That be, should be fun. Um, otherwise, I am going to Colorado in April and to yarn over in September um, for teaching. But if you have a local yarn shop, if you have a local knitting guild, if you have um, a company that you do business with that you know hires teachers, will you put my name in there? I really like teaching. It's my favorite thing to do. Um, I like to travel. I like to go to places. I'm not the most expensive teacher in the world. I, I try to keep my rates low, my prices low. I mean, make it worth my while, but I don't charge what some of the big names charge. So like local yarn stores who think that they can't afford to have a teacher um, usually can afford me if they, you know, if they can get eight to 10 people in a class and charge um, for the class, they can usually cover my costs pretty easily and make a little money for themselves. Um, especially if they can sell something along with the class I'm teaching. So yeah, keep me in mind, will you? I'd really like to go, especially if you live in somewhere exotic. Let's sign off this week. Come in for your hug. Some of you are hugging me back. I got the nicest card. I got a thank you card. I won't say your name, but you know who you are. I got a thank you card for a prize. Um, I got a number of cards from you um, after Cody died. So that, that was lovely as well. I just, I feel like we have a little sense of a community here. I feel like you know me and I feel like I love you. <laughs> so um, we can just keep all of that going. Until next time, grace costs you nothing. Buy the gravy. No green bananas. You'll never regret ripping back. Don't complain with your mouth full. Keep it colorful. Keep your fork. Waddle on. <laughs> Love you all. See you in two weeks. Bye.